but what's more important is the clean commit messages behind it actually mm, right and this just makes it transparent right so um if you incorporate all of these your chances are really good because mm -hmm. if someone comes up with such a clean project wow i mean i've done quite some hiring in in my years but i really rarely very very rarely get a person who does this <clears throat> hey all, welcome. Today we're gonna take a look at commits and change log. A thing we always which, wanted that in my yeah, life. <laughs> very interesting, right? <laughs> yeah, but you can you can uh, make some some shit there for sure. So crappy commit logs and so that's all not good and a thing to avoid. But there's much more to that. No, so, no, no. Say it the opposite. You can just do whatever you like in there, but if you do it differently, you save yourself a ton of work and that's pretty nice. Yeah, and like right. more from that side. Mm -hmm, right, yeah. Because it, yeah, it really saves a lot of work if you know what you do for your colleagues, yes. for yourself. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, I may, maybe I have just a perspective from that side because we had um, messy commit logs and then after a while we looked back at them and no one could figure out without really looking into the, the code, what was actually done there, because it was just bug fix, bug fix, more fixes, not running, whatever, just, yeah, not specific stuff. There, there's also cool stuff um, like automating change logs, which is mm. one of the coolest things because compiling change logs for releases manually is always a bit annoying because you have to go through yeah a lot of information which was done before. And if you have a team of four or five people working, oh, good luck man like yeah really not fun like it's okay it's manageable but definitely not what you should do manually like a good programmer is lazy you know yeah yeah that's, you that do sounds it once, pretty maybe twice yeah. but but then you should at latest have automated it <laughs> yeah 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 um i mean in this one i i wrote a bit generally about also commits and merging mm -hmm. um I'm not sure, I, I mentioned it in a video before, there are th three ways to merge. There's the merge commit, there's the squash merge, and there's the rebase merge. Mm -hmm. um, here you basically, this is the default on GitHub. You basically want to combine both together. Most of the time, Git can do that automatically. Um, but if you have a conflict that some two people added it at the same lines, uh, yeah. and then you need to have a, a, a merge conflict and you need to resolve it, usually easy. That's like, I do that in my sleep. Squash is, of course, really nice because mm -hmm. uh, when you have a pull request, which usually happens is in the pull request, you have a lot of commits. And I must say, there are, sometimes you debug something like a CI pipeline and then you make, make like, yeah. fix CI pipeline, fix CI pipeline more. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Try different CI pipeline fix. Mm -hmm. Because, like, it doesn't, you just need to trigger this pipeline sometimes because yes. you cannot debug it locally. Yeah. And, and then you start pulling out these nonsense commit <laughs> messages. And the squash merge is really nice because it kind of, it takes all those intermediate commits, yeah. squashes them, kind of eradicates them. And then in the end afterwards, it there's just one commit which gets basically merged into mm -hmm. um, the history. And then you basically, um, in this one commit, you can write a nice commit message. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's really cool <laughs> because you, you, you throw away the dirt yeah. You know, and then put it in. And that's why I like it the most, honestly, personally. But at work, we, uh, I must also say, often do the merge commit because we just say, ah, we can afford taking the whole history. You know, we don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and rebase. Rebase is basically you take the changes from one branch. Uh, you can look it up, by the way, uh, in the link here. And then you basically take this additional commit history, plug it out and plug mm -hmm. it in somewhere else. So mm -hmm. you rebased and um, that's a, a different thing. But, um, look, look it up if you don't understand it in, in details. It's always quite helpful. Yeah. Um, feel a bit more comfortable. You don't need to know in detail because Git is really complicated. But yeah, it's always good to know roughly what these three do. Um, Fun, funny thing about that, um, the first way I was taught to do commits was the rebase. So because we had... It was ugly project setup, and we had also binaries committed, and this was pretty ugly. But uh, the, the thing was that um, 
in this project there were there were some files uh, mainly xml files which are mm -hmm. constantly were changing by every commit so uh, and to avoid all the merge conflicts we were uh, just rebase, yeah. yeah we had rebase all the time and um, but that's also okay man like mm -hmm. i saw a lot of people just rebasing in their repos too yeah. it's really a matter of what you need yeah and also a bit of taste i must really say that um mm -hmm. there is no entirely right or wrong yeah, you're sh sure that the merge conflicts are not not happening in this case because yeah yeah, yeah you just rebase before the commit yeah that, yeah it made sense for us to go that route but yeah today I'm also going for them the merge the yeah. normal the normal merge I would say okay yeah that's good man I think on some repos where we coded in the past I put in the squash squash merge yeah uh, you can by the way set it in the repo settings even on GitHub. All oh, right. To okay. Say which one is the default and that stuff. It's really helpful. Yeah. People people never never understand this stuff until they start appreciating a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, yeah, I don't need to tell a lot about commit messages, but yeah, you just basically mm. write a commit message right for every commit, whatever. The the more important stuff is how this should look like. Now the trick is if you do these commit messages in the right way in a standardized way some tools can parse it and create a change log from it and that's basically the whole purpose of it yeah um, why i like it so much um <clears throat> from my personal experience for sure it might not be complete but there are these two um, which are really really popular and yeah if you go with one of them you're basically always right the keep a change log um, it's a pretty short thing but um, they basically say you use certain keywords um, to um, notify something. And then mm, if these mm -hmm. keywords are in the commit messages later on, um, tools can pass that com the, the past commits yes. and know what was added and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's basically about edit for new features, changed for change, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I don't like it too much for two reasons. The thing is, uh, edit, remove, change. I don't know. It, it feels for me not specific enough. Mm. Um, because, yeah, I, I mean, it's okay. It's for more for me, like for smaller stuff or hobby or whatsoever. But um, the categories here basically are not usually my problem because security is usually you have a team of multiple people and one is a security guy or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, but other topics in a repo are, for, exa for example, CICD, where you also have usually an expert. And the problem is, if you look later at the change log it's gener generated, by the way, this is from the lesson, just that you know how it looks like. Uh, unreleased is for unreleased, basically what has not been released. And then now you see here, edit. And then like there's all a mess of what was added. There would be code changes mm. next to CICD mm. changes and stuff. And usually I like more the categories of expertise. And this yes. is what... Um, Angular does better, Angular style changelog. They basically have different categories. Um, for example, if you did some docs, mm -hmm. fixing, CI, build, feed for feature, fix for fixes, but also stuff like per perf. Usually you don't need it, but it's really handy to have that category at all, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, Refactor is also cool because like you clean up shit all the time. Yeah. So, right. um, it's good that you can give it its own category that it's clear how much cleanup was actually done in the code base because yeah, then you have a release later where there's only one item for the user and they have no clue and it's at least good that they see that a lot was done in the in the back you know mm. now, so, so all of this um gives more granularity um i would i would as a rule of thumb i would say go for keep a change log if you just do something if you really want to do it for a hobby project or whatsoever right or small stuff at work is also no problem if you want to be a little bit more serious um definitely uh yeah go for the angular um i really appreciate it for what they did exactly in the in the changelog stuff i'm yeah. not sure if this is the right link i just figured out oh yeah it is the right link yeah no no so this is really really beautiful yeah and um yeah that's basically it I don't know what which one do you like more like uh, this edit stuff or more like these categories well pff, 
well, it depends. Um, as you said, for small stuff, I think it's good to have. If you if you yeah. don't have anything, I think um, the keeper change log is better than than nothing, right? So it's yeah, yeah. far better. And for small thing, it's um, it's all you need. But if you have a lot of commits, um, then categories make sense definitely. And then I would also go for that route. So yeah, yeah. Um, to to kind of do this i did use here git change log mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's a big uh, discussions going on with different people i had in the last three months about their, their other tools instead of git change log okay. so uh keep an open heart in mind there um mm -hmm. also some which are not python related they are just binaries from golang was once okay. and stuff yeah. Uh, which do sometimes in some aspects better job, definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, once again, in this this dev tooling around, uh, there's always a bit of a grain of uh, taste, but this one here does it. Usually you can uh, tell these tools the dialect, which one of these change log types you have optimally, mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> the rest is black magic. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. For the example here, just as a quick, I incorporated it basically into... Um, into the um, docs. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I just, uh, you just add a step um, in which you additionally create the change log through these tools, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah. looks like this here. Yeah. Um, here I added it as a dependency for the docs basically, so it runs before. Then you incorporate this file, which is generated um, into, of course, the, marked, uh, the, the markdown docs. And what I really like to do is, um, it's a bit of a hustle, but this file, uh, this is by the way an include, Ma uh, you can include stuff in um, material, uh, not material, in this morning has really been not good for me, mkdocs, <laughs> material docs. Yeah. 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 Um, but you need this little uh, extension in, that's why I pasted the stuff. It's all written in the text, so don't worry. Mm -hmm. What it does is, um, the thing with these docs is, I want to quickly want to explain it. The change log itself will be in a file here in the root folder, um, which is pretty common, to be honest. Mm, and yeah. what it does is in the docs folder, um, it is basically there is this change log file. Um, and, but this one does only include the one in the root folder. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the, the, the reason why I did it is, um, so nothing changes in the docs folder really. You know, yeah, yeah. just when you run the doc surf, it's generated in the root folder and is then just included when you really build the doc. So you avoid that. Um, otherwise, um, this stuff would need to be built all the time and corrected. And you would always have an outdated change log because someone didn't run it and commit it. But mm -hmm. changes happen in between. So yeah. you really don't want that. You also don't need it because in the end, when you either run it locally or you deploy it later in the CI CD pipeline for a release, um, then it gets updated anyway. So it, it doesn't make sense to have that all the time. So the, the intermediate solution I had was put it here in the read root folder, add it to the git ignore, of course. Um, so it's not committed mm -hmm. and then include mm -hmm. it in mm -hmm. the docs down. Yeah. And it, yeah, it makes sense. I already showed it. It's really nice. Then you get stuff like this. Usually you get here instead of unreleased also version tags. You have then all the, the different versions. Um, and then you can go through what was added, fixed, removed, and so forth. Really nice. I really like it. Includes including yeah, commit uh, ticks and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Really, really helpful. I have a question about this. Um, I'm not, not that familiar with it, so maybe it mm -hmm. sounds like a little bit noobish, but <clears throat> sorry. It's um, um, Does it take into account only commit messages or is it also uh, the naming for pull requests and uh, branches and stuff like that? Only commit messages. Only commit, all right. Because yeah. it only operates through Git mm -hmm. and Git is just commit messages. Pull all requests right. and that stuff is just on GitHub. Okay. Um, but the good part is this also works then with Bitbucket and GitLab and stuff. Mm, mm -hmm. Because at its heart, everything is Git. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah thanks for clarifying. Important, important question. Definitely. Yeah, and there's no more shenanigans. But I really, um, if you want to have something like this for your project, but also for later, if you have customers or something, um, 
really good or users already users would love you and then you can later on do a release you just tell them look in the the change log every time you do a release and basically releases then releases can be quite long you know you need to um it comes later uh, in, in a later lesson the releases but uh, they can be quite um quite a lot of work also then later making announcements and stuff like this Mm. And it really helps if you just automate as much as you can from this um, because you want to release also quite often. You don't want to release yeah. uh, rarely. Yeah. So, yeah, if, if a release is a pain, do something about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's about it. I mean, there's not much more to say. I think, uh, uh, do you have any questions further? I don't think so, right? No, I think the, the, um, the different ways of committing uh, should be tried. Maybe that's part of a homework assignment, you could say, to just fool around a little bit with, with the different ways of, um, of committing and merging. But apart from that, I think it's all clear and um, easy to incorporate, I think. And it adds a ton of value to your code. So, yeah. It's, yeah try it I, out. I have a question. Um, <laughs> the question, the standard question I will have for every feature here. If you have a hiring process and um, someone would come up and has a uh, change log request, is that super plus point or is it um, required as a standard? What do you mean a change log so request? Let's say you would give a task to a potential yeah. Yeah. Um, candidate. candidate. Right. So, and this candidate. Uh, then uh, incorporates also and docs and automatically change log with it. Is that a super plus uh, point for, for this candidate or is it just basically required? And if it's missing, then it's a negative. If it's not missing, you you won't be nagged. Okay. Um, automating change logs or something is also not done usually in small projects at companies. All right, yeah, sure. Yeah, um, okay. What I just want to say though is if you come up and you deliver, like at the end when you have all the lessons in, um, there are some optional bit, little bit ones, but if you have most of these lessons in a repo and you deliver that repo <clears throat> as a show off mm -hmm. and you have stuff like this, like change yeah. log generation. Uh, change log generation is a part, but what's more important is the clean commit messages behind it actually. Mm, right. And this just makes it transparent. Right. So, um, if you incorporate all of these, your chances are really good. Because mm -hmm. if someone comes up with such a clean project, wow. I mean, I've done quite some hiring in, in my years, but I really rarely, very, very rarely get a person who does this. Mm. I mean, they do a part of it and I understand it's tiresome and whatsoever, but you can also maybe just privately create one template and then use it if something comes up and just fill in the code or something, you know. But if you really do something so thorough, I usually am like, wow, this is this is not normal. This is mm -hmm. most definitely not normal. Yeah. Um, then you really are shining out. Yeah. Um, and I want to say you don't shine necessarily just for code. Code is of the evaluation. We, we, we can maybe do that more in the hiring. Yeah, part, in the hiring video, yeah. yeah. Code, the, the code part, making uh, writing the code right and, and good and whatever, it's, it's maybe maybe a third okay. maximum 20% to a third and yeah. another third is all of this around mm. um, which shows usually also more maturity I mean writing good code is the first thing people learn but packaging stuff right yeah. and writing a nice repo yeah. writing nice commit messages doing documentation this is usually the stuff which comes after junior developers learn to code they learn these topics yeah so that's why this is so important and has more weight in a sense yeah and this is also commit messages is one big part because uh people coming from university or somewhere usually don't know how to do um, proper commit messages mm -hmm. right so this is also a big big like if you have something small like this it always shines you you, you don't see it as it worsens you if you don't have it see it more like if you add these things, especially around the code, you mm -hmm. shine much more. And yeah. that's more important, you know. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's it.
All right, yeah. yeah. And then um, I have another thing. We have forgot something at the beginning. Yeah, I had the yeah. same sense, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking. It looks pretty boring. I drink from a cup this morning, but wait. I need to quickly uh, see what it is. So this morning, uh, I drink... Uh, Mushroom tea, man. <laughs> <laughs> man. <laughs> All right. I found this fellow in the forest. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a good one, man. Okay. Um, I never tried mushroom tea, to be honest. Um, have... I've never tried before this fellow, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is a, a, a category, a, a subspecies of the reishi. Yeah. And Jesus, man, like. Uh, what it what it helps with, man. The the, the list is super long. Yeah. I mean, the stuff like uh, helps with. I don't know. It's a, a lot of uh, diseases generally, like mm. uh, immune system. Anyway, high blood pressure, mm. heart diseases, um, inflammation, inflammatory yeah. diseases too, yeah. sleeplessness. It's very funny because this stuff here, this guy here. Um, it is kind of like it has a, an effect like uh, caffeine. Mm-hmm. It, like when you drink it and you have a, a bit stronger one, it really, the first sip you're already like, whew. Okay. Has a bit of an odd taste and smell too, I must say. But okay. coffee is worse. So don't worry about it <laughs> if you drink coffee. Yeah. Um, and it really has this wow. But the, the really strange thing is you get really awake, uh, mm-hmm. but you can sleep like a baby afterwards. Okay. And it's I don't so know. It's interesting what, how that works. I, I don't know what's causing it, but it's mm. most definitely um, what's definitely a, a creepy thing. But the, the really problematic thing with this fellow here is uh, he's pretty hard, mm. mm-hmm. right? And um, I kind of always have to <laughs> <laughs> tool it down. It, you know? yeah. yeah, yeah. So that there's no other for me, no other way, and. I could powder it or stuff like this, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I, I need to figure out how to powder it first. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like, you know, that you need to chip off a piece. Yeah. And then and uh, crush it, it kind so, of, yeah. it has more character, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to earn your tea. <laughs> what are you drinking, man? Yeah, for me, it's, um, I'm back to the jasmine again. And, yeah, uh, nice. Yeah, jasmine oh. is great, yeah. I have none at home, man. Yeah. That's great. Great as always, and you can never never make something wrong with it. So it always yeah. fits. Yeah. Good old jasmine tea. Yeah. yeah, that's always good. I need to fill up uh, once again, I guess. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, then. Good. yeah thanks then... for watching. Thanks for being here. And um, yeah, I think uh, seeing you in the le- next lesson. Like it, subscribe to your our channel if you like, and um, yeah, join our Discord. We see you around there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.